Hey guys, it's Julesy, head smart brown girl in charge. We are here for a quick video. Usually I do a little bit more research, a little bit more planning for my videos. But this one I want to do off the top, off the dome. Swinging with my girl in the background. She's from Cuba. I'm from America. How y'all doing? If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, subscribe because we are here for critical thought and dialogue. It's always a good time, a good key, a good discussion. So come join the smart brown girl party, whether you're a girl, whether you're brown or not. I tell you to comment along as the video progresses because engagement matters. We're trying to do better. Mm, mm. But let's get into this topic because some of y'all clicked on the title like, okay, what's this chalk got to say? Let's get to it. Slavery obviously is not a choice. More so than breaking down the idiotic Kanye statement, I really wanted to come and kind of riff off top to explain some basic history about slavery in America. So Kanye West recently did an interview with John Carmonica trying to backpedal and clarify the slavery is a choice statement he made to TMZ back, what was that, at the beginning of June, the Shade Room posted about said New York Times article and said statements trying to clarify said previous statements and the comments on said the Shade Room post. I mean, first of all, don't we all just go to the comments in the Shade Room? That's what we're always here for. I was horrified at some of the statements people were making trying to assert their knowledge about the transatlantic slave trade. And I was like, no, where are you getting this information from? Like where on God's green earth did this idea that slavery only lasted for 200 or 250 years come from? 200 years? I do not believe that anybody is dumb. I believe we all have intelligence within ourselves that just simply has to be pulled out. Dumb is an effort. With that said, I also understand for the most part in the public education system, really anywhere in the world, you don't really learn about the nuances of American slavery. The most I learned was that, and I took AP US history. We kind of got a little bit more into it, but it was really just kind of framed as slavery being a necessary evil. So the most unfortunate part is that black folks really don't get a chance to learn about the history of their people and what slavery really was the systems, the structures, the culture that comes from that, unless they take an American history class in college or grad school. And if you're not from the States, I don't know how, when, or where you would ever really learn about this. So here I am to just give you a few basic facts. So as I was saying earlier, where did people get this idea that slavery in America lasted 200 to 250 years? And on the shade room, I was really surprised to see someone say slavery was only 200 years. So Kanye was saying that y'all were slaves by choice for the other 200 years. First of all, if you want to see Kanye Kanye is a musical genius, sure, but stop trying to extrapolate that genius and place it on the historical genius because he is definitely not. He got a guided tour of the National Museum of African American History and Culture that is the Black Smithsonian that sits on the mall. His mother was a professor. He has direct access to all the people, but first of all, this wasn't even about Kanye. Let's get back to talking. But in the comments, it was like seeing Jess Hilarious say thank you to someone who said slavery was 200 years. Y'all. So when I say slavery, what I'm referring to is a transatlantic slave trade, which is where Western empires came to the coast of West Africa and took kidnapped African slaves from West Africa. African countries and brought them over to Europe and the Americas. That would be North, Central, South, and the Caribbean. Now, one of the other things to understand about the transatlantic slave trade is that slaves were moved around as countries and colonies expanded and certain countries abolished slavery, enslaved people were moved around. As industries changed, as capitalism going capitalized and the plantation owners were trying to franchise and expand their businesses, what they do? They took their enslaved people with them to other places. When we talk about slavery in America, we are talking about this huge apparatus that was in line with other major imperialistic powers from Europe. And so the transatlantic slave trade has been going on since the late 15th century. That would be the late 1400s. Like we're in the 21st century and it's 2018. 15th century would actually equal the 1400s and the late 1400s is when the transatlantic slave trade began. It's not really a period that again you would learn about in public school system because then you would have to address the erasure of Native Americans. So it's largely skimmed over unless you get you a book like this. Here's a grad school history book out of many. History of the American people. It pretty thoroughly covers the Native Americans, what the Americas looked like, how slavery came into play, who was doing it, what. Now, and I think what people are saying when they say, well, slavery's only been around in America for 200, 250 years, I think what they're more so referring to is like this economic boom that happened in the Southern United States where major plantations became a thing. Now, before I bore you, this idea that African American enslaved people did not revolt or that they were making some choice to be enslaved, just such malarkey because there were plenty of revolts happening. People ran away, 
Who was Harriet Tubman? Yes, I know she made a comment about she could have freed a whole bunch more, but look, if you ever get into liberation theology, which I tend to throw into different conversations here or there, right? The basic principle of liberation theology is that in order for an oppressed people to survive, they do have to absorb some part of the oppressor. That means that all of us watching this video, no matter how high and mighty we think we are, have absorbed some faction of the oppressor. We have absorbed some frame of white supremacy that colors our lens, that gives us a bias towards other people. Wow, I really took my fire alarm down and didn't put it back up. Ooh. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. We all have absorbed some level of the oppressor in order to survive as an oppressed community. Now, in order to liberate said community, you don't tell them that they've been enslaved by choice. That's not a choice you make. It is literally an instinct of survival. We tend to think of slavery as a very minute, small piece of American history. As major plantations became a thing in Southern United States, it wasn't that there was one plantation owner and a bunch of black people who were being treated like cattle that were lazy or lethargic or just moping around the plantation like, yes, master, I'm gonna do whatever you want. Much like you go to a corporate job and you have a CEO who makes a ton of money and you probably getting paid less than you deserve. And you have not revolted. You have not ran up on nobody like you dame dash and pressing for your own daggone money. Cause there's a system, there's a structure in place. There's HR, there's managers, there's supervisors, there's VP, there's executives, there's C-suite. Okay, so dudes might not have had no computers, no experience sell spreadsheets, they might not have had payroll, they might not have even had IRS, a matter of fact, they didn't have IRS or regular taxes, tariffs, okay? They still had a system and structure. Slavery was not like a handful of white men just doing whatever they wanted to do. It was an entire legal system, a structure that employed other white people and anytime a black person got free, they were usually employed back on the plantation as well to keep all these people in check. Slavery really built the foundation of this country. White folks were able to pass down generational wealth to their families and black folks because we weren't even seen as human were stifled with understanding that slavery in america happened for over 400 years ending with the emancipation proclamation in 1863 and bro we just had juneteenth like two three weeks ago juneteenth is a celebration of june 19th 1867 supposedly the last slaves were freed in galveston texas i don't even know if that's all the way true because if any of y'all put together your family history your family tree you'll quickly realize that a lot of your family was probably in some way shape perform so disenfranchised through labor that they technically still were slaves until around post-World War II, which would put us at the late 1940s. Now, even if you want to contend that slavery ended a little over 150 years ago, after slavery, we had a brief period of reconstruction, which is where the federal government, and we know how well they do their job at social services <laughs> with computers, so imagine what they were doing in 1867. Well, tried to reform the lives of formerly enslaved black folks and give them some sort of small piece of a taste of what potential equity could be. That era quickly came to an end in 1877, thanks to, well, white supremacists gonna white supremacize. Does that even want to work? Racism gonna be racist. Capitalism gonna capitalize. It's built on the back of slaves, bruh. White folks just went back to their old ways. And then we enter into what's considered the darkest period of racial tensions for African-Americans in America called, I say Nadir, I think it's Nader. This is where you see the great migration happening of black folks fleeing the South to flee the violence and lynching and burning of their communities, which is why it's so weird to me when people mention the Oklahoma Wall Street. Like, yes, it was a community that was flourishing, that was doing well for itself, that was burned down. Now, if black folks had the same sort of generational wealth that white people have access, don't you think they would have rebuilt the black Wall Street somewhere else? But black folks have been facing terrorism from the white man since the 15th century. So to suggest that slavery is a choice, to suggest that black folks have sat in a slave mentality since slavery, I take it very offensive when folks like Candace Owens try to posit decisions that black folks make based off of survival as still being on the plantation. Since you don't know nothing about the plantation, you don't actually know the history of your people to make such an equation and it's just straight offensive. I personally do not have any shame of being a descendant of enslaved Africans. I personally would recommend anyone to definitely visit the Black Smithsonian, the National Museum of African American History and Culture in DC. But I really think you just have to understand the resilience, the strength, 
strength that your ancestors had to survive, build this country, the ingenuity they had in crafting such a distinct, beautiful and colorful and flavorful culture. You have a culture, sis. African-American is in fact the culture, okay? Be proud, I got a whole video talking about the blessings of being African-American. And please do not assert misinformation in order to misplace genius status on somebody who doesn't deserve it. If there's maybe something specific that I mentioned here that I could talk about more in another video that you're interested in, let me know in the comments down below. If there's something you just learned from this video, let me know in the comments down below. Always support smart brown girl. I'm gonna have some new African-American as a culture shirts very soon. Watch out for that. <laughs> Deuces!